What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video for the SQL tutorial series here on Neural9. In today's video, we're going to cover constraints. So as the name already says, things that we can use to constrain individual attributes, individual columns with stuff like, for example, not null, unique, or has to be in a certain range and so on. So let us get right into it. All right, so up until this point, we already covered a lot of the SQL basics. We talked about the basic CRUD operations, so create, read, update, delete. And today we're going to talk about constraints. So things that we can add to individual columns to constrain them uh, to say, for example, they have to be unique, the values in that column have to be unique, uh, the column cannot have any null values, or the column has to have values in the range between X and Y, if it's a numerical column, for example, stuff like that. This is what we're going to talk about today. And one of the constraints that we already talked about is this primary key constraint. So the primary key constraint, again, is just unique and not null. So it says, this ID here cannot have any duplicate values. So no two different rows can have the same ID. And also, it's not allowed to be null. So there always has to be an ID value, and it always has to be unique. Now, the constraints that make up the primary key can also be used separately. And for this, we're going to change this uh, table structure here a little bit. And first of all, I'm going to drop the table, if exists, people, I'm actually not sure if it exists right now. So drop table. And then we're going to create a table again with ID name, and then we're going to use here, a uh, social security number, which is going to be a character of size 32. Um, and what we want to do here is a couple of things. So first of all, we want this social security number, by the way, not semicolon, just like this. Uh, we want the social security number to be unique, but we don't have to have it every time. So it's not going to be our unique identifier here. It's not going to have to be present every time. But it's going to have to be unique if it is present. So what we can do here is we can just say unique. And this would mean that no two rows can have the same value for social security number. This is already a constraint. This is like primary key, I now have here PID integer primary key. And here I have SSN uh, character 32 unique, making this a character of size 32. That's unique and character meaning string. Um, for the name, for example, I can say the name does not have to be unique, I can have 100 different mics, and that's fine. But I want to have a name. So I'm going to say this is not null. So now when I create uh, an entry here, when I add an entry, when I add data to the table, I have to pass a name because the name is a non null uh, column, I have to have a value there. And for the age, for example, I can do a default value. So if no age is provided, that's fine, we don't need to have uh, an age provided, but if no value is provided, I want to have a default value. So I can say default, for example, 21. So those are already a couple of constraints, primary key, as I mentioned, not null, meaning I have to provide a value default, meaning if no value is provided, just go with 21. And unique meaning no two SSNs can be the same. Now, what I can also do here is I can add a new constraint for the age, I can add an additional constraint for the age, uh, which I can specify down here with a constraint keyword. So I can say constraint, and I can call it whatever I want. Let's go with age constraint, for example. Uh, and the age constraint is going to check, I'm going to use the check keyword here, it's going to check that the p underscore h is greater than or equal to zero. So you cannot have a negative h. And I also want it to be below uh, below 200, because there's no one who's 200 years old, at least as of right now. So this is the range that I want to have the age in. So this is another constraint, I'm not going to be allowed to enter negative 10 or 300 for the age. So those are constraints now. So let's go and create this table. And now let's try to insert some values. So insert into, and then people, let's go with PID and P name. Now those are the only two columns that are not allowed to be null. So I have to provide them. So values are going to be let's go with um, with one and with Mike, again, like this. So 
this worked because I didn't violate any constraints. But if I now go and say select everything from people, and I run this, you can see that I have Mike with an age of 21. So this default constraint kicked in. Now, if I try to create with the same ID Jane, of course, it's not going to work. We already saw that in the previous video, primary key has to be unique. Um, but let's go for example, now and create a second Jane. And let's say Jane is 25. And Jane has a certain social security number. So for example, a h seven, seven, eight, one, two, let's say this is what a social security number looks like. I'm going to insert this. And what's the problem here? Oh, I didn't provide these columns. So PHP SSN. There you go. Now it works, I can select again, you can see we have the social security number. Now let's say I want to insert value three for the ID, then a name, uh, Angela for the name, and then I want to have 54. And I want to use the same social security number. If I try to do that, you can see duplicate entry, I cannot insert this into the table. This doesn't work because it violates the unique constraint for the SSN. So this is a problem. Uh, if I change this to a three, then it works because now it's a different social security number. There you go. All right. Now, oftentimes the ID is not going to have any information. Uh, or actually, before we go into this, I want to show you first of all, that DH also works. So if I say uh, four, and now we have john and we have some unique social security number like this. Um, if I say john is negative 10 years old, you can see this violates the age constraint here. If I say john is 300, you can see this violates the age constraint again. And even if I say 200, this is going to violate the age constraint because we have less than if I say less than or equal to, um, I would have to recreate the table. So I'm not going to do that. But then it would work. Okay. Now, oftentimes, what we have is we have an ID that is a unique identifier, but it's essentially a row number. So it's one, two, three, four, five, and so on. And it doesn't really matter what the content of the ID is. it just matters that it's unique and not null. So that is what we need, we want to have some identifier, but it doesn't carry any information. It's not a social security number, it doesn't say anything about the person It's just some number. In this case, it doesn't matter what it is. So we can also automatically increment it instead of specifying it every time. So instead of saying PID, P name, PH, PSSN, I can just say P name, PH, PSSN, or even just P name. And the ID will be automatically incremented. So if I say something like, in this case, when I recreate the table, now I'm going to need a mic again. And we're going to need a john again. So this would be enough to create new entries. Right now, if I run this, you can see the ID field is not specified. But if I now add an additional constraint here, auto underscore increment, this basically means create or, or automatically increment the ID every time you enter something into the table. So I'm going to drop the people's table, I'm going to create it again. And now I can insert Mike and John. And when I select, you can see one, two. And I can do that a couple of times because the name is not unique. So I can do that. And now you can see we have Mike, John, Mike, John, Mike, John, Mike, John, with these IDs being incremented. So this is also an interesting constraint. Um, yeah, so what else can we do, we can also apply constraint onto multiple fields. So let's change the people's table here again, let's say we have a first name, which is a variable character, let's say, 255. And uh, I want to have a last name, which is going to also be a variable character of length 255. Um, and what I want to do now is I want to say, okay, the first name doesn't have to be unique, the last name doesn't have to be unique, but I want a combination of the first name and the last name to be unique. So it's okay if I have a Mike Smith and a Mike Stone. And it's okay if I have a Mike Smith and a Jane Smith, but I don't want to have two Mike Smiths. So what I can do here is I can say again, constraint. And I can say, uh, name underscore constraint, unique, and then I have to pass in parentheses here, the P underscore first name, and the P underscore last name. Like this. 
uh, again, no semicolon here. So drop the table again. And now I can specify the first name and the P last name. And I can specify here, Mike, Mike Smith. And I can specify also John Smith. And this is not going to be a problem. You can see this works Mike Smith, John Smith, and I can also copy this now and I can insert a Mike Stone and a John Stone. That's no problem either. But if I now try to enter again a Mike Smith or a John Smith, then you can see duplicate entry with Mike Smith for key. So yeah, this is the constraint for that. And of course, what we can also do is we can add constraints to existing tables. So right now, um, the first name and the last name combination is unique, but I can also say, okay, I want the last name to be unique after I created the table. Now, the problem here would be, of course, that if I do it right now, it would violate already the constraint because we already have some data that violates this constraint. So if I say now, alter table people, and I say add constraint, and I say, I don't know, unique underscore last name, uh, and the constraint is unique, and it applies to p underscore last name, then this is not going to work because there's already data that violates this constraint. So what I would have to do is I would have to truncate, I mean, I don't have to truncate the table, but I would have to resolve this conflict, uh, which I could do by just truncating the table. And now I can add the constraint. Now we don't have any data, of course, but now this would not work anymore because now I have the entry Smith and Smith, which is problematic. But it would work, of course, if I would have uh, Mike Smith and Mike Stone, because the first name is still not unique. Yeah. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.